All right, what's up, guys? I wanted to show you this particular call. I pretty much covered the whole thing with the GoPro cam. And I'm responding to a wires down call that was reported by a member of the public where upon my arrival, uh, high voltage primary line, 7,200 volts was laying right across the road. The cutout is still in the closed position. So there's a chance that could be energized. Although I, I can see the fuse link from the ground. It looks like it is blown internally. So first step I'm going to do is grab the tested hot stick, the grab all, and use a potential indicator. This particular model potential indicator, it does self-test. As soon as you power it up, it goes through a little sequence to show that it's functioning. But a good practice when using any brand of potential indicator, potential indicator being a voltage detector without direct contact, proximity detector for voltage, a good practice with any brand is if there are any live lines around, test it against the live lines first. That way you know 100% for sure that it is working. And then test it against the suspected isolated line. Also, it's our procedure that before installing a ground on any line, you must check for voltage, either using a multimeter or a proximity detector. Our standards also require that we use class 2 rubber gloves when sticking a hot sticking any primary lines or switches. So we test it on, on the riser on the lead going up to the, the main line primary and it is still energized. Top of that cutout's energized. Now when we check the bottom side, we've got nothing. So that does confirm that that fuse link is blown within that cutout. So the next step here where that fuse link is blown, the the fact that that primary wire is laying on the ground, it's not drawing any fault current, so it will be safe just to pop that open. I wouldn't open, uh, cut it with any load with anything other than a 12 foot stick or a load buster. This case here, that fuse is already popped, so we just knock that open and we're going to remove that riser lead here now to isolate that cutout completely and gain a little bit more clearance between the overhead line and that downed wire you can see hanging off the pole. Not to my surprise, that tap clamp is seized on. We're, that's the ocean off in the distance. There's a lot of salt air here. That's likely why that cutout didn't open as well. The, the spring is probably pretty rusted. So we're going to go down and get my hotline cutters. It's much the same as the grab ball tested 100,000 volts per foot. But it's basically a bolt cutter on the tip fit with a lever with a tested rod going down so that I can operate the cutting head from a safe distance. So something I do want to mention, the reason I don't take that hotline cutter initially and just go and cut the wire that is laying on the road is because of step potential. You don't want to, regardless if you're a member of the public or a trained lineman, you don't want to walk up close enough to grab a wire even with a hot stick because if that wire is live, that voltage is going to energize the ground around it. It can be extremely dangerous. So you do want to keep your distance as much as possible. That's why I've got my truck set back quite a ways from where that down line is, especially where that cutout door was still closed in. So something else I'll mention while we're getting our hot stick out and jumping back up in the air is many of you who watch the channel, they know I respond to these trouble calls by myself and sometimes a lot of questions about how I handle certain situations. Majority of the time when I arrive by myself to a trouble call that involves high voltage lines, I simply make sure the scene is safe. I'll isolate the wires, open the switches, de-energize and put grounds on whatever I got to do to keep members of the public and myself safe. And then I wait for backup. If that wire was down just across the field, I would have just sat in the side of the road, made sure I would have shut the power off, obviously opened the cutout, um, but I'm not going to mess around any further than that until my backup arrives. In this case, the only way to stop cars from going down the road is to block it off completely, and there isn't really a, a, a detour around this area. So we do want to clear that across the road, where I do have procedures that I can do that safely. If it was something I could not do safely and I had to shut down the road, then that's what I would have to do. Simple as that. Oftentimes, there are emergency services, firefighters, police on scene where I can use them to assist with traffic control and flagging and securing the scene if I have to leave and go shut the power off at another location. 
So in this particular call, it was right at the switch and the fuse link did blow. So we're going to cut that lead off with our ratchet cutters. Pretty neat tool. You can see I just pulled down on that lever. You can see that rod running up to the top. And that snips that number four copper lead right off. Now it is bouncing around a little bit. That lead's pretty rigid. So I just take my grab ball and I'm going to kink that downward just a little better. So the issue here, I mean, everything's clear that high voltage line now, but our procedures dictate that you cannot touch any piece of equipment or any wire that was ever energized at primary voltage unless a second lineman is on site with you. So regardless of the down wires, the cutout the lead and all that being isolated now, I still cannot touch anything by hand. Well, except for that cutout door because it's completely removed from the system. So what I'm going to do next is I had already spoken to my dispatcher before going up. That's something I didn't cover in the video. Before we open a switch, before we remove a high voltage lead, before we install a ground, basically before we do any work at all on the primary system at our company, we do have to speak with our dispatcher. So I called dispatch and actually got a work permit on this line already. It is radial feed. There is no alternate source down that sideline to, to back feed unless the customer has their own generator or something like that, which we'll get into in a few minutes. But so I, I do have uh, a permit. So I do have permission to open that switch, remove that lead and install my ground. So we already did check for potential using that proximity detector. And before we go and clear that line off the road, we're going to put a ground on it. Even though it's isolated, there is potential for back feed. There is potential for a static charge. There's, there's potential for a difference in voltage between that wire and ground where it's sitting on insulators. So we're going to put our ground on. That's, that's something that applies to every situation when working on isolated or dead lines. You see here, I'm giving her a little wiggle, struggling a little bit because normally those wires are under tension. The, the duck bell, we call it the end of that ground where it grabs the wire. It's got a fairly rugged spring on it. And when the wires are under tension, it's, it's nothing to pull it down against the tension for that duck bell to open up where this wire is just kind of flopping around. I got to give it a wiggle and play around a little bit. Finally, it grabs a hold. We simply spin our grab ball to the right, which is going to tighten that duck bill up. And we've now got our ground on that line. So the scene now, it's, it's pretty safe. I mean, if a, a car drove by and went over that wire, it's, it's not connected to anything. It's laying flat on the ground. It is grounded. Probably the worst hazard at this point would be if it were to get tangled up in the wheel well or something like that and yank at the pole perhaps, but it, it was laying good and flat on the ground upon my arrival. Perhaps one of the only things I may have done different, this is actually footage from a while ago. Some of you may recognize a few of these shots from a couple of older videos, but one, one thing that I would perhaps have done different would have been completely cone the road off before even going up in the air in case a car did come by. People in this area are really good. They would have stopped and waited for the five minutes or so it took me to get that ground on and stuff. So now we can go up and do what some of you were wondering why I didn't do just to begin with, and that's just use a hot stick and cut the wire. So because of step potential, I didn't want to get any closer than that wire until I had to, until the ground was on. So the only thing now, this side I'm going to grab with the grab ball, it's the side with the ground on it. I still can't touch it by hand, but we're going to clear it off the road over into the ditch. But now since I cut the wire, I actually lost my ground on the other side. So once the crew arrives, it's, it's off the road. It could be energized from back feed or, or a static charge or something. But the, the scene is safe. I'm going to leave my truck sitting exactly right where it is. Once the other crew arrives, our next step at this job will be set up at the pole. You see off in the, in the distance there now. And we will have to install another ground on that side. So that's pretty much it, guys. We've had rain here for like three weeks, worked all weekend. And I'm just getting home now. Figured I would share this quick video with you all. 
I hope you all had a great weekend and be safe.